This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, students. Uh, in today's class, we are going to discuss about uh, different torques available on the three-phase induction motor. See, in last class, we discussed uh, starting torque and riding torque of three-phase induction motor, right? Now, uh, so uh, what is the need of? Uh, we need to find the different torque means. If you want to find the how it will be performing, right? So, if you want to find the performance of a three-phase induction motor. It is need to find a different torques available on the three phase induction motor, right? Uh, now, uh, if you see, uh, so already we seen a uh, torque equation DC motor, right? What is the equation of uh, torque equation of DC motor? What is the torque equation of DC motor? So, R match torque is equal to. Zero point one five nine into pi IA into PZ by A. Right. So this is the torque equation, uh, how much torque equation of DC motor. What about shaft torque? What is the formula for shaft torque in DC motor? Nine point five five into EB IA divided by A. Right. So uh, these are the torque equations we seen in the DC motor. In DC motor, we have three types of torque. One is armature torque, shaft torque, and lost torque. What is the relationship between these three? What is the relation between armature torque, shaft torque, and lost torque? So TA minus TSH, sorry, TA minus TSH equals to TL. Or else you can write TA is equals to TL plus TSH, right? So what is the uh, reason why we need to uh, make the relation means if you want to find the performance of a DC motor, that is uh, which device will convert the a mechanical energy as output there we have to be uh, give the relation between the different talks so these are the three talks available on the dc motor now we represented in the in the form of relation and similarly in three phase induction motor also we have to find the performance and it should be uh, represented in terms of torque so let me go for a three phase induction motor So, uh, in three phase induction motor, we discussed in two cases, right? One is starting condition. Now, you will see that what is the torque equation at starting condition? TST equals to 3 divided by. 2 pi ns into e2 square r2 divided by r2 square plus x2 square newton meter 
so this is the starting torque equation for three phase induction motor so what is the maximum torque condition what is the condition for maximum torque here At what condition we can obtain the maximum torque at starting condition? Right. So when rotor resistance is equal to the reactance purpose. So this is the condition for starting torque. Next, uh, for running condition. Tr is equal to 3 divided by. 2 pi ns into s e2 square r2 divided by r2 square plus s x2 whole square right so this is the torque equation at running condition and for maximum torque we can we have the condition is r2 is equal to s x2 so these are the derivations we discussed in last class now in today's class we are going to discuss about how many torques are available in the three phase induction motor and what is the importance of these torques and how we can make the relation among these three torques okay so that is the topic we are going to discuss now in three phase induction motor we have three types of torque so what are the torques means one is starting torque Next one is maximum torque. Third one is full load torque. So these are the three torques available on the motor. One is starting torque, maximum torque, and full load torque. Okay. Now we are going to be uh, make the relation among these three uh, three torque equation. Now the first condition is the relation between full load torque and maximum torque so among these three we need to find the relation the relation between full load torque tfl and maximum torque And what is the importance of this relation means by using this relation, we can find that performance of a three phase induction motor. That is important. So we uh, the reason is why we need to make that relation. The uh, talks available on the three phase induction motor is if you want to find the performance of a three phase induction motor, there is only one way you have to make the relation among these talks. Then only you can find the performance. Now, in first case, we are going to be find the relation between full load torque and maximum torque first of all uh, let me draw that what is well, let me i write that equation of full load torque and maximum torque so the full load torque is given by tfl so generally uh, before that uh, i will change So I'm uh, just I'm going to the torque is directly proportional to that yes e2 square r2 divided by r2 square plus yes x2 four square. This is the standard equation of torque. Now, from this torque, how we can write that full load torque equation is TFL is equal to that is TFL directly proportional to SF square that is a full load slip E2 sorry SF E2 square R2 divided by 
आर टू स्क्वायर प्लस एस एफ एक्स टू स्क्वायर Now uh, this is the equation represent that full load torque. So here, S F is a full load slip. What is the formula for slip? What is the formula for slip? n s minus uh, n r divided by n s. So here E S F we can write. So that full load slip is n s minus n r divided by n s. So it is also called as normal slip. Yeah. Now similarly we are going to write that the maximum torque equation. The maximum T m is directly proportional to the S m. E two square R two divided by R two square plus S M E X two square. So this is the relation for full load torque and maximum torque. Now we are going to be related with respect to these two equations. How we can make the relation? See if we know the two equations, how we can uh, how we can make the relation by using the mathematical equation. Whether we had to be diff, uh, we had subtract, we had to be addish, uh, add, we had to be divide. So these are the mathematical expressions, and it will tell us that relation among the two equations. Similarly, here also I am going to find the relation, the ratio between full load torque to maximum torque, T F L divided by T M. So what you will get? So the ratio between full load torque to maximum torque. So just do that uh, relation. So here the full load torque is S F E two square R two divided by R two square plus S F X two square into R two square plus S M X two square divided by S M into E two square R two. So this is the uh, relation. Now we need to simplify this equation. So how we can simplify this? See if you observe this uh, numerator denominator, e two square r two and e two square r two both will get cancelled, right? Now we'll see that what uh, what is the remaining equation will get. See after cancellation that numerator denominator, I can write here S F divided by S M into R two square plus S M square 
x2 square divided by r2 square plus dsf square x2 square now this is the equation after simply after uh, eliminating the numerator and denominator now from this how we can write means sf divided by sm and from this numerator and denominator take x2 square as a common so if you take that x2 square is a common you will get r2 square plus x2 square plus sm square and denominator also take that uh, x2 is a common x2 square r2 square plus x2 uh, that is uh, x2 square plus sf square these two will get cancelled Now, from this R two divided by X two. So R two divided by what you can write R two divided by X two. So you can write R two divided by X two is a S F because at S is equals to one. So starting from this way, R two divided by X two is a multiple. SM गया, so substitute R2 divided by X2 by the replacement of SM. So what you'll get here? SF divided by SM. So just write. Yes, F divided by SM. Into instead of R2 divided by X2 square, R2 square divided by X2 square, I can write SM square plus SM square divided by SM square plus SF square. So this is the equation we obtained after substitution of R2 by X2 is equals to SM. Now uh, there is any chances to get cancellation? There is simplification. Da. So how we can simplify this equation? Uh, so I am going to simplify this. SF divided by SM into so numerator you have two SM square right? So two SM square divided by SM square plus SF square. Now from this one SM. SM get cancelled, then you will get two SF SM divided by SM square plus SF square. So this is the relation between that full load torque to maximum TM maximum torque. Here two SF SM divided by SM square plus SF square. Next, so this is the first relation. Next second relation of uh, we can we are going to find that 
the ratio between starting torque and maximum torque so are clear about this relation students are clear about this equation right so now uh, we are going to find that a second condition so second condition is it shows the relation between starting torque and maximum torque okay now so now i am going to write the second relation that is the relation between starting torque and maximum torque just write that uh, relation or uh, equations of these two separately and after that we can find the relation so the starting torque we can write tst is equals to and it is directly proportional to s st the starting slip e2 square r2 divided by r2 square plus s st x2 square now this equation i can write e2 square r2 divided by r2 square plus x2 square how this equation becomes like this so equation allows you how it is become like this ikkada emma st undi ikkada st ledu enduku reason endi right super so because our starting condition slip is one right so just i substitute here s is equals to 1 so we uh, we got that e2 square r2 divided by r2 square plus x2 square similarly t max that is maximum torque and it is directly proportional to that sm e2 square r2 divided by r2 square plus sm x2 square so these are the two equations we obtain that starting torque and maximum torque now we are going to find the relation between starting torque with respect to that maximum torque tst divided by tm let me see that how we will get the relation tst divided by tm so first write that uh, tst equation e2 square r2 divided by r2 square plus x2 square into r2 square plus sm x2 square divided by sm into r2 square sorry e2 square r2 
So here in this relation, uh, the numerator and denominator will get cancelled. That is a uh, e two square r two and e two square r two. From this, you will get one divided by S M into r two square plus S M square. Into x2 square divided by r2 square plus x2 square. Now, from this, uh, we are going to be simplifying what we uh, simplified in previous one. So, just take the common x2 square from numerator denominator. One divided by s m. Into if you take that x2 square is a common x2 square into r2 square plus x2 square plus asm square. Similarly, in denominator also x2 square r2 square divided by x2 square. Plus one, so x two square x two square, square get cancelled. So finally, we'll get two SM divided by one plus SM square. So this is the equation we are getting that the ratio between starting torque to maximum torque. See here one slip is not mentioned here because at starting condition the slip is the start st is one right. So we got two sm divided by one plus sm square. Now we'll see that two relations separately. So this is the different torques available in the three phase induction motor and the relation. Now I am going to write again these two relations. Then we'll see out some problems. So the first relation is the full load torque divided by maximum torque is equal to two into SF SM divided by SF square plus SM square. So this is the first relation we discussed. A second relation is. Starting torque divided by maximum torque, and its relation is two SM divided by one plus SM square. And these two relations are very important while solving the problems. You know, just know those these two relations, and we will solve the problem on this. Now we will do the problem uh, based on this uh, relation. I will not do these equations. Right. So we, I am, I am going to explain. Uh, we are going to do one problem based on this uh, relation. The first problem is what is the given problem is a 24 pole. So here number of poles equals to 24. A 24 poles, 50 hectare star connected induction motor has rotor resistance is 0.016. So here the frequency is 50 hectare. Rotor resistance R2 is 0.016 ohm. Uh, 
and the rotor reactance is 0 0.265 x2 equal to 0 0.265 Purpose at stand still. So these are the parameters at stand still condition. Now, uh, if it is achieving a full load torque at a speed of 247 RPM, so the running speed is. 247 RPM. <laughs> then find the full load torque divided by maximum torque. How we can find the value? So, uh, first of all, write the relation uh, of this uh, ratio. Tf divided by Tf is equals to 2 SF SM divided by SF square plus SM square. So this is the relation of which is ratio of Tf by Tf. Now we are going to find that the value of SF SM. So, what is the formula for SF? That is full load slipper. NS minus NR divided by NS. What is the formula for SM? SM is equal to that is maximum slip. R2 divided by X2. Find these two values, SF and SM. Find the values of SF and ASF. So, how we can find the NS value? 120 F by P. So, you will get 120, 120 into 50 divided by 24. Uh, 2 all under 2 all 2 24. Uh, 10 is there. 10, 50. 2, 5. So here NSS is uh, 750 RPM. Find the value of SF and SF. So, are you finding that SF value? So here SF, uh, that is NS value is not uh, 750. So it is a 250 RPM. Find the SF value. 250 minus 247 divided by 250. What you will get? Zero point zero one two super. So the SF value is zero point zero one two. What about SF? Right. 
zero point zero six. Then find this ratio Tf by Tf. What is the ratio of Tf by Tf? Double zero five zero four. Wrong answer. So GF divided by TF is equal to two into. Zero point zero six zero into zero point zero one two divided by zero point zero six whole square plus zero point one two whole square. So it should be approximately equal to. Uh, 0.3. Have you all got this answer? So you will get approximately 0.3, 0.3 something. See, uh, while uh, so we had to. May have yes, super so zero point four approximately. So while while solving this type of problems, we had to indicate the bracket here, or else you had to find the separately. Then only will get the correct answer. Okay now, right? So uh, in uh, so in material, one more problem is there. Just do the practice on that. And we have only two topics are remaining in the fourth unit. One is losses, and second one is torque slip characteristics. Okay now. So, uh, next week, we next week we maximum three classes. Say. So, we will have extra classes for this one. Okay, na? so we will have uh, 18th last date. So, 18th last date, we will have 18th local syllabus complete. Shal. So, uh, maybe I will take that class on Sunday also. Okay, now, in the time you have to uh, come, right? Can I have to inform just now? Okay, one day, Monday, after class, I put this under. Okay, now don't worry. And we have only two top, two topics are remaining: losses and the task practice. After that, we will go for uh, fifth unit. Okay, now so two topics which is the maximum is Sunday class. This can I have to yes now. Remain next week which is the fifth unit complete just. Okay, now so my range is around eight. If you work with the fourth unit, you have practice just only starting task, maximum task. Okay, now. So, I will tell you how to do it. So, I will tell you how to do it on Sunday class. Okay, now. Right. So, okay, students, uh, this is about today's class. Just go through the material and practice once again. Then only you can understand the concept. So, I am going to end this class now. Thank you.